as we now know, was found slumped in a lift in her housing block near Waterloo Station. So that was the most click. Next, let's talk about the debates, getting the real buzz online today. One of the stories generating a lot of discussion online is the serious concerns raised of a growing trend in training of dogs to fight each other, or even training dogs to attack people. The RSPCA says it's received a surge of calls from the public. Here's some statistics for you. Last year, 358 people said they'd seen youths or hoodies training their pets to fight in the street or park. That's more than double the number of calls during 2006 and 15 times more than in 2004. Met police figures also show there's been a massive rise in the number of animals seized under the Dangerous Dogs Act. The average between 2003 and 2006 was 38 dogs a year. In the year to April 2007, 173 were seized. And in the following 12 months, that, jump, uh, that figure rather has jumped to 480. Well, Dr. Roger Mugford is an animal behavioral expert. He says it's the people who are the problem, not the breeds. I think the fact that this dog and I'd say 99% of other Rottweilers are so sweet um, um, points out the daftness of having legislation that focuses on the breed. We want legislation that pays attention to bad owners and dogs that are dangerous, that really do injure people, not just that look a bit scary. Well, are these animals becoming a status symbol or even a type of weapon? Joining us tonight is Nathaniel Pete, director of the Safety Box Youth Program. Good to see you, Nathaniel. Thanks for being with us tonight. What's your reading of this? Are these now a new weapon in youth culture? Yes, it is. I mean, uh, if you think about it, uh, a young person can get stopped with a knife and uh, they're going to be arrested by the police or stopped and searched and they're going to get in trouble. But you see a dog, who's going to stop you if you're walking the dog? And uh, so I think a lot of young people uh, are using the dog as a new weapon. Uh, they're going to the parks, they're going to the streets, and they're training these dogs to fight against each other uh, so that the dog then is more vicious. And uh, it, is, it is a growing problem. And uh, there are more and more young people which are carrying dogs as a means of protection. So this website, we picked up this blog here online, making exactly the point that the owners, or at least the people use, out with the dogs, walking the dogs, seem to be getting younger and younger. Look here, what's worrying me, the people I see with big scary dogs are getting younger and younger, increasingly obvious that owning these dogs is a status symbol, and a status symbol that's one to intimidate others. I don't know if it's a national trend. To my eyes, it's certainly a local one. Do you think it's a national trend, Nathaniel? I think it's a trend across the whole nation, to be honest. Uh, what we've got are a number of issues. You've got young people uh, that want to feel protected on the streets. Uh, they're rough streets. And um, one, one thing is, uh, they've been told for how many, how many months and, and, and a few years now to put down the knives. Uh, the young people are putting, putting down the knives, and I think they're picking up the dogs as a means of protection. Uh, that, that's, one, that's one form, but then there's, an, there's the other side, which is an ego and a status uh, issue where they, they, they're picking up these dogs, they're training these dogs to fight, to appear to be bad, to appear to be tougher, and they're going out and intimidating other young people. Right. Uh, so they're not attacking other humans. They are, I mean, this blogger also makes the point that they are setting up fights in the local park, or not in the obvious. Part of the open part of the park maybe but round the back of the trees uh, here they go look in Wandsworth borough it says rival gangs are using them to settle scores meet up with another gang took the two dogs into a playpen or a tennis court and let them fight uh, to decide who wins and that is sort of allows that gang to have the, the top uh, position in their culture for a while. Um, if that's the case, what do we do about it? What are your answers, Nathaniel? Well, I mean, uh, the key thing is to get into the minds of the young people. I've always said this, if you can get into the mind of a young person, let's say age four or five, change the mindset from an early age, then you can change, uh, change their mindset and their, their outlook on life differently for the future. Uh, the key thing to break this down, just like the knives, we're trying to get them to put down the knives, putting down the guns, uh, stop doing this with the dogs, it's an animal cruelty. Uh, we have to develop their minds. We've got, to, we've got to try and get into them on another level. Uh, preventative methods, I don't think, are the solution. I think we've got to get into the schools. We've got to re-educate. Um, the, the problem's not with the dogs here. It is with the owners. So it's about, it's about educating. It's about uh, changing the mindset. It's about uh, pushing forward and, and, um, and trying to, to, get to solve this problem of violence in young people. Thank you, thank you very much indeed. Now, another story heavily discussed online today is this, the launch of a new Facebook service designed to encourage Im and improve relations between major religions and even tackle extremism. It's a big ask. It's called Faithbook. Like other Facebook groups, members can post comments. They can write notes about their views.